when somebody was given a position, now kings and queens were oftentimes given a key in their coronation ceremony, but whenever a steward was elevated to this position of power within a kingdom, they would do a big ceremony and they would take a much larger key than this and they would actually, as a sign of authority, they would lay that key on his shoulder and then from that point forward, they had a, a little hook that they attached the key to and the key dangled from the shoulder and was worn on the shoulder. It was a much bigger key. It was worn on a shoulder so that no matter where that steward went, his rank and his authority and his position was recognized. Jesus said, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. Come on, we don't need to wear it in our pocket. We need to wear it on our shoulder. The government is on his shoulder. Therefore, the government is on our shoulder, the shoulder of the ecclesia. Jesus holds the key. But then he gives us this thing in Revelation 3 that says, let no man take your crown. Let no man take your key. So if he's saying, don't let anybody take that, how many know that it can be taken? How many know if I, he gives you a key, it can be lost? So let's go back to Isaiah 22 for just a moment. Then we're going to tell you what these keys that I saw in my vision are. Isaiah 22 um, comes along at a time, and even though he's not mentioned in this particular, pa this particular uh, chapter, it's during the time of King Hezekiah. And the scripture says of King Hezekiah, it says everything he did was right in the sight of the Lord. How would you like that to be said about you? Everything he did was right in the sight of the Lord. He was a righteous reformer that was determined to turn his nation back to God. He had a very evil, wicked father by the name of Ahaz who built high places and sacrificed to idols and, and Baal and Ashtaroth and all this ungodly wickedness. And when, he, when Hezekiah came into place, he made a determination, I'm going to spend my life turning this nation back to God. God is looking for reformers in this nation and in other nations. God is looking for people within the church in our community that says, you know what? We're going to rise up and we're going to turn Santa Rosa Beach back to God. We're going to turn Destin back to God. We're going to turn Freeport back to God. We're going to turn Panama City Beach or wherever you're from. We're going to turn it back to God because we've got a heart of a reformer to, to, re, to reestablish godly worship, to reestablish the word of God. Hezekiah was a man that was the king, but he was also in the fight of his life. How many understand reformation is not easy? Because during his kingship, his right-hand man, his treasurer, undermined him. Played political games. Worked against reformation. That's why God gave him a name that means Hezekiah. That's Hezekiah. It's the word Shazak in Hebrew. Look at this word Shazak. It means to seize hold of, just seize hold of that key. It means to be courageous, to be strong, to cure, to heal, to mend, to be obstinate. Not against God, but for God. Sometimes we just got to get obstinate. Right? I'm battling this thing in my ear. I'm obstinate. I'm stubborn about it. I'm making my decrees. Whether I see the evidence right now or not, I'm making my decrees, and I'm not changing what I believe based on my circumstance. Come on, we got to get stubborn about the things that we believe. His name means to be obstinate, to conquer, to fortify, to encourage, and to prevail. You know why? Because within his kingdom, there were those that were resisting him. Do you realize that every time God tries to bring reformation, a reset, a rebuilding within his kingdom, there are almost always in scripture and in our natural life a resistance force. In the days when they were rebuilding the temple, back in the days of Ezra and Nehemiah, and Zerubbabel was rebuilding the temple, there was a group of people, Sanballat, Tobiah, and others that were resisting his reformation. In the days of Esther and Mordecai, there was a guy named Haman 
not Haman. A guy named Haman that was resisting that reformation. Daniel was a reformer. How many know Daniel got thrown in a lion's den? That's resistance. But he resisted the resistance. Well, we got we to get a little stubborn to resist the resistance because God is establishing his church in a brand new way. Amen. And so he was determined to turn his nation back to God. And I believe that in this season of time that God is raising up both spiritual and political reformers for in the United States of America who are going to arise with a passion just like Hezekiah had to turn this nation back to God. We've been seeing it over the last several years and the declaration, America shall be saved. But I also want to prepare you for this. Even though there's going to be a strong movement of turning America back to God, there's also going to be a strong persecution. There are people that hate us for believing what we believe. They're mocking us. They're making fun of us. And they hate us because of our faith. I won't tell you how I know that except that I do read um, the comment section of several major newspapers that are publishing anti-Christian documents almost every single week. I'm not encouraging, I'm not even telling you what I'm reading because you may not want to read it. But the comments under there, people hate us. They hate the church. <laughs> a number of years ago, we were up in Washington State, and we saw a bumper sticker on a car that said, so many Christians, so few lions. <laughs> Guess what? The Antichrist is alive and well. But so is the Spirit of Christ, and greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen? We're going to have to get stubborn in our faith. We're going to have to get stubborn, not hateful. We're going to have to love those that hate us. We're going to have to do good to those that persecute us and despitefully use us. We're going to have to be the church. We're going to have to be who Jesus called us to be.